Oscar Wilde, born Oscar Fingal O'Flaherty Wales Wilde, was born in Dublin, Ireland on 16th October 1854. His father, William Wilde, was the leading ear and eye surgeon in Ireland who was knighted for his service as an Irish census medical advisor and then established St. Mark's Atomic Hospital to support the needy in the area entirely at his cost. Wilde's mother, Jane Francisca Elgie, was a radical poet and expert on Celtic myth and folklore, writing under the name Speranza. Oscar Wilde was educated at home till he was nine, where he was taught French and Greek languages by French nursemaid and a German governess. From 1864 to 1871, he attended Portora Royal School in Enniskillen County, Fermanagh. In his last two years, he received the school's award for the highest classic students, as well as the second prize in drawing during his final year. Oscar was given the Royal School Scholarship after graduation in 1871 to enter Trinity College in Dublin. Wilde established himself as an excellent student at Trinity. In his first year, he came first in his class. In his second year, he earned a scholarship by competitive examination. After graduating in 1874, Oscar was awarded the Berkeley Gold Medal as the best student in Greek at Trinity, as well as a Demiship Scholarship for further studies at Magdalene's College in Oxford. Wilde proceeded to Oxford, earning first-class grades in both classical and contemporary moderations from his examiners. Oscar made his first sustained effort at creative writing at Oxford. Oscar Wilde developed many broadly divergent interests during this period. He contemplated moving from Anglicanism to Catholicism, but then became interested in Freemasonry and later became much more active with the aesthetic and decadent movements. During this time, Wilde established himself not only as a classical scholar, a poesia, and a wit, but also as a poet by winning the coveted Newdigate Prize in 1878 with a long poem, Ravenna. He graduated with a double first class at his BA the same year in classical literary humanities. Upon graduation from England, Wilde relocated to London to live with his friend Frank Maus, a famous portraitist in London. There, he continued to focus on writing poetry and in 1881, he wrote his first book, Poems. While the book only earned moderate critical acclaim, it nevertheless established Wilde as an up-and-coming poet. The next year, in 1882, Wilde moved from London to New York to embark on an American lecture tour in which, in only nine months, he gave a whooping 140 lectures. He managed to visit some of the day's leading American intellectuals and literary personalities, including Henry Longfellow, Oliver Wendell Holmes, and Walt Whitman. On the conclusion of his American tour, Wilde returned home and promptly started another England and Ireland lecture circuit, which lasted until mid-1884. Through his writings as well as his early poems, Wilde established himself as a leading supporter of the aesthetic revolution, a philosophy of the art and literature that emphasized the pursuit of beauty for its own sake rather than advocate political and social opinion. In 1884, Wills Wilde crossed paths with an old friend called Constance Lloyd, a rich young lady. The pair married and set off to establish themselves in society as fashionable trendsetters. The Wilds' marriage was successful by all accounts and produced two sons, Cyril in June 1885 and Vivian in November 1886. Wilde always played with his grandchildren and deeply loved them. He wrote book reviews for newspapers and magazines to support them, including the Pall Mall Gazette and the Dramatic Review. The fortunes of the literary genius changed for the better when the Ladies World magazine named him its editor in 1887. Wills converted it from a fashion magazine to the Women's World with essays about women's viewpoint on art, music, literature, and modern life. In 1888, he published a book of fairy tales called The Happy Prince and Other Tales, and in 1889, he wrote an article called The Decay of Lime. In July 1889, he quit the magazine and began his greatest playwriting time. Just six months after quitting The Woman's World, 
Wales published the critically famous novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. The book was quickly followed by Intentions, Lord Arthur Seville's Crime and Other Stories on a House of Promegranates. From 1891 to 1892, Wilde produced Salome, Lady Windermere's fan, a woman of no importance, and the essays, The Soul of Man Under Socialism. His audiences were entertained and they gave standing ovations at his plays. One might imagine all the success, publicity, and commercial exposure should be appropriate for a decent married man with two sons who eventually earned British aristocracy recognition. During this extraordinarily productive time, however, Wilde started to visit literature circles which were often homosexual. He's reported to have had his first homosexual liaison with a Canadian named Robert Ross in 1886. He was also introduced to Alfred Taylor, who lived in Bloomsbury. In 1891, Oscar Wilde met the young man who would forever change his life, the 21-year-old Lord Alfred Douglas, known as Bossy, son as the Queensbury Marquis. Douglas has often been portrayed as elegant, feminine, aristocratic, affluent, homosexual, and poet. By 1892, the two were always together and undertook several trips abroad. Wilde rented homes in London for them and he wrote letters while they were apart. In 1893 to 1895, Wilde achieved unprecedented success at the London theatres. He had two plays running concurrently in the West End. A Woman of No Importance opened in January 1893 at the Royal Theatre Haymarket and Lady Windermere's Fan began in November of the same year. From August to September 1894, Wilde wrote the importance of being earnest in the seaside resort of Wharton, Sussex. His wife and children enjoyed the holiday with him. In 1895, he had all London's praise for his humorous work on society plays. However, he had become indiscreet about his personal life. The year 1895 marked the end of his mainstream success and the privacy of his sacred life. The estranged father of Lord Alfred, Marquis of Queensbury, caught on the affair between his son and Wilde and an enmity ensued. After Queensbury left a calling card accusing Wilde of sodomy, the feud hit a boiling point and infuriated Wilde sued for libel. The scheme backfired when Queensbury legal team launched a defense based on the premise that it could not be a libel if it were the truth. Reports of Wilde's lay scene with men came out as did some blackmail details and even Wilde's writing came under criticism. Forced to drop the lawsuit, Oscar Wilde was convicted and charged himself for gross indecency, the official umbrella indictment for homosexual behavior. Oscar pleaded not guilty and stood on the trial, but he was convicted and sentenced to two years of hard labor. The hard labor took a toll on Oscar's already poor health. In an accident that later contributed to his death, Oscar suffered an ear injury. He was finally allowed materials during his incarceration and he wrote a lengthy letter to Douglas that set forth a reflection of his life, relationship and spiritual evolution. He was released from prison and immediately sailed to France in 1897. Oscar took the name Sebastian Melmoth while in exile. He spent his final years digging into spirituality and railing for jail reform while writing his greatest poem, The Ballad of Raiding Gaul. His wife, Constance, had settled with the boys in Italy, changing their name to Holland because of the scandal. She declined to see Oscar and died afterwards. She declined to see Oscar and died afterwards. Oscar spent some time with Ross, his longtime lover, as well as Douglas, after losing the inspiration to continue writing. Wilde's health took a dramatic downturn. Wilde had developed a reference for Jesus Christ during his time in jail and had written his theological beliefs. Just before his death, at age 46 in Paris on 30 November 1900, Wilde was baptized into Roman Catholicism. Reggaetona, who had been a loyal friend, and Ross, who became his literary executor and the principal keeper of his legacy, were at his side. 
Wilde was buried in Paris, where his grave has become a huge attraction for tourists and literary pilgrims. In 2017, Wilde was one of the men officially awarded posthumous pardons under the Alan Turing Law for charges of formerly criminal homosexuality. Wilde has become an icon much as he was in his days for his elegance and peculiar sense of self. His literary works have become one of the most important in the canon. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.